What's up, everybody? It's your coach. About to give you the breakdown on how to break down special Rawlings Outfield Glove. Please, if you like what you see, hit the like button for me. Subscribe. Comment below. I'm going to answer you. I'm going to have my boy break in gloves if you need them to. Hope you enjoy this video on how to break in Rawlings Glove. So outfield glove, velo, heart of the hide glove. My boy's got his mallet. We got the glove there marinating. About to show you the process from the beginning. Here we go. Got my boy Nick here. So Nick, other than being a beast at a lot of stuff, my man's good at a lot of stuff, really, really, really became known in his time in professional baseball as almost like the glove surgeon. So he had a way that he would break in gloves and he became so good at doing it that other teams and other people would just reach out to him and that became his niche. It almost became like a side hustle, breaking in gloves at speed time. So I grabbed him and I said, how about we showcase what you do, how you do it, so that everybody can see. So Nick, we have here a brand new Rawlings Heart of the Hide their Velo series, sick glove. If you want to explain a little bit, Nick, of what you see there, how you start your process, it's well, all you. It's gonna be, my favorite gloves to break in are the Rawlings because the, the thickness of the leather is, is just right. Um, I have a little kid, uh, a 10 year old, and breaking, you know, I, as, a, as a professional father, if I play professional ball, I always want him to use big league gloves. A big league glove for a little kid to break is not easy. So I would break in his glove. What happened then was I got a team and I wanted to have a good first baseman. So I got, you know, hey, dad, buy the glove, I'll break it in for you. I need my outfitters to be good. Guys, buy the best gloves out there, I'll break them in. So that's kind of how it all started. Um, breaking in a glove is twofold. It's not just making it soft, you gotta shape it. This glove actually came in pretty good. It has a nice deep pocket, it's open. The, the crowd that I kind of cater to that I'm really working with now is 11 to 14 year olds. This glove is very wide for an 11 to 14 year old. So besides being hard, it's very wide. So when I break it in, the first thing that I'm gonna break in is, uh, is this binding down here. The goal in breaking in the glove is to keep it as firm as possible, but have it be able to close easy with little effort, you know, uh, thumb, thumb to finger, thumb to finger. So I have a little strategy that, that I picked up throughout the years. Um, I know there's a couple of guys out there online that break in gloves. The first thing I want people to know at home, it's, it's okay to wet gloves. Leather's very resilient and it dries up very quickly, but I need to be able to, to wet the glove so I can start manipulating it a little bit. Um, if I'm at home, I put the sink on really hot and I just run it on top. I don't soak it, I don't submerge it in hot water. I just let the outside kind of get covered in some hot water so then I can start uh, the process. Here at the gym, what I did is I turned on the shower. It's, uh, it's as hot as it goes. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Just want to leave it on, everybody knows it's a new glove. As you can see, it's, it's hard, brand new, wide open, it has a pretty good pocket. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna wet it. I'm gonna show you how quickly I wet it. Kind of run it under the water a little bit. Make sure it's all wet. Again, I'm not submerging it, I'm just making sure it's all wet. That's it. Get the water drip off it. That's good. But it's good enough. Now I can manipulate it a little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do with a with a glove is I'm gonna turn it inside out. Guys, it's leather's resilient and it's rolling, so it's good leather. So turn it inside out, and the first thing I want to start doing is playing and manipulating this bench here, which is what helps the glove open and close. So the more I can break that in or loosen it up, the easier it's going to be. Again, I'll do this probably for a couple of minutes, nothing crazy. Really trying to get in there and then separate that, that binding. 
breaking it in. Flip it back over, and the same thing, just trying to grind that binding together. The more I can grind that, that binding together, the easier it's gonna to be to break in. Again, I don't mess anything with the fingers because most, most ball players like the fingers to be very firm. The goal is to have a firm glove that opens and closes easy. It's better for durability and sustainability. If you run it over a thousand times, you get everything really soft and you get a pancake, no kid likes that, no, no player likes that. So again, working on breaking the hinge. That's what I call the hinge right here, breaking the hinge. Turn it over one more time. The shaping comes later. So basically now that hinge is a lot softer and a lot looser. If I were to put on the glove, it's still gonna be hard, but I can already tell that, you know, it's, it's already gonna be able to break and fold. Now the next thing that I do, it's gonna take me about two minutes before I air out the, the glove to dry. And there's a process I use to air it out. So, uh, I think it's $8 at, at any sporting goods store, go to Amazon. Um, Usually when, when somebody asks me to bring in a glove, I tell them, bring me a mallet. So I have a ton of these and they're priceless. First thing I do is I look for where the pocket's gonna be. Outfield glove, this is an outfield glove. We're gonna break it in finger to finger with having the, the middle finger as the, as the backdrop. So we're gonna break it in like that. But what I wanna do is create a real nice deep pocket. That's about the pocket I want. Take off my glove and just start pounding it in. Now because the glove is wet, the leather you can really manipulate it. So I'm, I'm kind of holding the pocket that I want to create that nice deep pocket in there. So I'm holding the ball there and just pounding it in. Again, you can already see that, that pocket being formed. Real deep pocket right there. Fingers are closed. That's beautiful. And again, because the leather is wet, it's easy to manipulate. You try doing this with the leather dry, you're not gonna get that deep pocket that quick. It almost looks like that creature that comes out of the stomach in Alien. But, but yeah, we're trying to create that, that, that belly right there. Once that belly's created, put my hand in there a little bit, make sure it's good. And basically just like this is how I'm gonna dry the glove. Look at that pocket right there. I don't know if you can tell from, from the camera, but that's, that's a deep pocket right there. Let's go outside, because now I put it in the car. So this glove's already soft, man. So now we're gonna go to the car and show the, show the little trick that I have to air it out. So real quick, before I air it out, just because the pocket's really important for me, I'm gonna go just one more time and really get that deep pocket. So that's really what I want, you know, deep pocket right there. So now you can put it anywhere to dry. I use the car for a few different reasons because I can pinch the car in the windshield. Now what, that I'll show you where it's going to hold these fingers together, hold it tight here and the heat in the car really dries it up quick. This glove in about two to three hours will be dry, dry as a whistle. And, uh, and then we'll start the, the second process of the, of the breaking in gloves. So let me just jam it in here real quick. Okay. You can film it from here if you want. 
see it? You see it there in the camera? Yeah. It's just, it's pinched up against the windshield, but it's got the shape that I want. The, the two fingers are closing to each other, and I make sure that this is gonna be the back of my glove right there in the pocket. And that right there in a couple of hours, the glove's gonna come out uh, dry. It's gonna come out nice and tight, and the rest is just expanding it a little bit. But this glove, it's, what time is it now? It's four o'clock on a Thursday. This glove is ready for a Friday night game. But I mean, 100%, no, uh, no questions asked. Super hard to, to break in gloves. The reason why I'm sitting here in this heat, behind the scenes stuff, this guy's really good. He's known for this kind of stuff. So I, I always want to bring you guys value and stuff that my parents, that I used to train a lot, would ask me. Parents or people reach out to me, go, Coach, how do you break in a glove? I had no idea. Now, there's a lot of stuff, but my boy's method is super popular. Last time we saw you, we were in the car. We hit it in the sun there. Right. You did your dampening right, warming right, right. system. So, so basically all I did, just because uh, it makes better footage than to shoot in the parking lot, I, I took the glove out of the dashboard and I brought it into the facility. It has a different look to it already. It's still a beautiful glove. But as you can see, by itself, thumb and pinky are closed, okay? And if you open it a little bit, you're gonna see a real deep pocket in there. Okay, so not only does the pinky and the thumb close by itself, you have a deep pocket. Mind you, this, this glove hasn't seen a ball yet. That right there, that's effortless. This is effortless right here. I'm just opening and closing my hand and thumb and pinky are closing. I created a, a, a Venus flytrap, if you will, you know, and this is an outfield glove and that's how it's used. So we got the deep pocket, the straight fingers. It's really important on these outfield gloves not to bend the fingers because you're trying to maximize the, the length of the fingers. That's why they use the bigger gloves. So the hinge is already broken, which gives us the effect of the easy open and close. Again, this glove has not seen a ball. I haven't pounded it with a mallet or anything. All I did was break the hinge and then I put it in the dashboard after I formed the pocket. I put it in the dashboard so it can hold its form. It's completely dry. It's as new, except game ready. Mick, let's talk about that. So obviously, I know, I don't think parents think about that, but every position has a different way of molding the glove, right? I, absolutely. So. Especially all as parents, we want to give our kids the best possible gloves. You got to realize that the best possible gloves are going to come harder than a regular kid's glove. There's a reason they're a kid's glove. It's soft, synthetic leather. It's not the real deal. If you want to get your kid a good glove, and uh, you got to learn, first of all, how to break it in, and then know the demands of that position. An outfielder needs the straight fingers. They need to be able to reach out with one hand. A big pet peeve that I have Growing up as a, as a child, they used to teach us, you know, two hands to the balls. That concept of catching fly balls is gone. We have a lot more range of motion. We can get to a lot more balls with one hand versus two hands, okay? The other thing with the two hands, you're kind of almost blocking your, your uh, sight. If you have yourself a good glove, you don't gotta be here with two hands. Infielders use two hands for a simple reason. The ball goes in the glove and they grab the ball out of the glove. Okay, but anything outside the body, it's one hand. So now that the whole one hand um, concept is, is out there in, in baseball in general, from the big leagues all the way to the youth levels, it's very important that we form that good pocket where that ball can get stuck in there. So for me, breaking the hinge and creating the pocket are the two most important things in breaking in a glove. So th this, is, this is Brian Nunez, King B, 10 years old. That glove hasn't seen a ball yet. First kid that's gonna catch a ball with it is Brian. Brian, go out there. I want you catching everything with one hand. Make flowers. 
six years old, right? Go grab that major league 13 inch glove, see if you can handle it. Go. What do you so, think, Nick? So that glove has never seen a baseball. We had a 10-year-old and a 6-year-old. Let me see the glove, Mako. Guys, this is a major league glove. You know how hard it is to break this in? This is top of the line leather right here, and we're able to break it in in 24 hours. Break it in good enough where a 10-year-old and a 6-year-old can use it without an issue. B, Rollings. real quick, throw it real quick to him. Let's see, let's see coach catch some. Let's see a pro do this. Just a couple here. How does that feel? Like butter. <laughs> oh, oh, oh very guys. nice. Any advice, Nick, for for people looking for gloves? Any any tips, real quick? So I'm I'm very anti little kid gloves. I think that if you have a, a kid that wants to be a ball player, I think you should get him the best possible glove. It's uh, they're a little bit more expensive but it's an investment, you know, it's an investment on your kid. Teaching him how to use the same tools he's gonna use at the next level for me is very important. You know, Rawlings, I think, does an excellent job of, of creating the, the, the weight of the gloves. There's a lot of gloves that are a little bit too thick for my liking and it's harder for it to break in and harder for kids to use. I think Rawlings has nailed the, the design uh, down to a T, so if you want a big league glove for your kid, I'd go with, with Rawlings. And then don't be scared of, uh, of wetting the glove, breaking it in. Leather is resilient, you know, beat it up a little bit. And by the time you hand it to them, it should be game ready. Don't expect your kids at six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 years old to break in their own glove. That's a long-term process. Just a little insight of providing value to let you guys know what a winning program. These guys are top at what they do here in South Florida, of the commitment, the attention to detail, to the smallest things, breaking in the glove, what to do, is crazy. At the end of the day, have fun, but the process is everything. It's your coach.